I think I'm going to stand. This chair is the most uncomfortable chair I've ever. It, first of all, it spins. And the one thing I don't want is to fall on my ass, because that's going to be, that will be the only story. They'll say, sir, you did great. Too bad you fell. That would be the only story. So I'm not sitting in that sucker. I think it's a booby trap. That was put there by Kamala. Yeah! <laughs> well, there you go. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Man, oh, man. So Kamala had an interesting week. She was doing a media blitz. She went to all these media outlets and doing interviews and tried to explain to the folks about her opportunity economy. So she starts off with 60 minutes. Pardon me, Madam Vice President. I, the, the question was, how are you going to pay for it? Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. It is not right that teachers and nurses and firefighters are paying a higher tax rate than billionaires and the biggest corporations. But, and but, I plan on making that fair. But we're dealing with the real world here. But the real world includes... How are you going to get this through Congress? You know, when you talk quietly with a lot of folks in Congress, they know exactly what I'm talking about because their constituents know exactly what I'm talking about. After that, she goes on to call her daddy. I'm curious, like, you don't do too many long-form interviews. What made you want to do Call Her Daddy today? Well, I think you and your listeners have really got this thing right, which is one of the best ways to communicate with people is to be real, you know, and to talk about the things that people really care about. I mean, what I love about what you do is that your voice in, in your show is really about your listeners. And I think especially now, this is a moment in the country and in life where people really want to know they're seen and heard and, and that they're part of a community, that they're not out there alone. And, um, and so I'm really glad to be with you. Then she goes on to the great Howard Stern. Let me ask you this. If he wins, God forbid, would you feel safe in this country? Would you stay in this country? Howard, I'm doing everything I can to make sure he does not win. And the one interview that kind of put a nail in her coffin was going on The View. The View is one of the friendliest outlets for Democrats. And she goes out there and she still lays an egg. As vice president, you've worked very closely with President Biden for almost four years. He was here on our show. Yeah. And he said there wasn't a single thing that he did that you could not do. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be the biggest specific difference between your presidency and a Biden, a Biden presidency? Well, we're obviously two different people and um, we have a lot of shared life experiences. For example, the way we feel about our family and our parents and so on. But we're also different people and, and I will bring those sensibilities to, to how I lead yeah she can't think of one thing that separate herself from biden that's what we've been trying to tell you her and biden are the same the same puppet master are pulling those two strings she can't think of one thing that separates her from biden and even cnn said it i'm surprised frankly that she doesn't have uh more to say about this given that she and her campaign know that this is one of the main questions that voters have about her. And, and one of the main things she's been trying to establish as part of her candidacy is the idea that she would represent a break from the past four years and to not be able to come up with something to say in that moment. Uh, she continues to, to not be particularly nimble on her feet in a lot of these interviews. <laughs> so that one answer was so bad that she had to go to the Stephen Colbert show and do a mulligan. Polling shows that a lot of people, especially independent voters, really want this to be a change election mm -hmm. and that they tend to break for you in terms of thinking about change. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are a member of the present administration. Mm -hmm. uh, under a Harris administration, what would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so yes. that would be one change yes. in terms of... Yes. But also, it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. 
What a week. What a week for Canada. You went through all these media outlets, all friendly media outlets, and you have not moved the needle. Make it so bad. You're drowning so bad that you want to do a second debate with Trump. You practically begging Trump to come out and do another debate. You talk about the debate. Why, why do you think Donald Trump won't debate her again? Well, you saw the first debate, didn't you? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, that's why. And his ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And so he's afraid that that's going to happen again. Rather, he's spreading this fog, this fog of misinformation and disinformation and gaslighting. No, 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 no. You had your chance. He gave you three opportunities. And when you was leading the polls, you was like, nah, I'm good. You're riding your high horse now. We're just going to do the ABC debate. And then you bombed the ABC debate, just like Trump said. Well, you know, when you when you don't win, it's like a fighter. When a fighter has a bad fight, gets knocked out or loses the fight, the first thing he says is, we want a rematch. Baby, that's too late because he offered you three chances and you said no because you was leading in the polls. Now that you're far behind in the polls, your media blitz didn't work. Everybody's laughing at you. Have you no empathy, man? Yes. You know, I, for the, the suffering of other people. And now you want to do another debate. So what? So you're going to set Trump up again? No, 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 no. It's not going to be no three versus one anymore. Trump is leading the polls. He don't have to give you no oxygen anymore. He gave you a chance. You you were so high on your horse that you said, nah, I got it. We don't have to do it anytime, anywhere. And Trump gave you three. You said, no, you just want to do that one. And you bombed. And now you want to do another one? You want to get another chance to embarrass, try to embarrass Trump? No. And I believe we owe it to the voters to have another debate. So hopefully Trump will not fall for this and give you a second chance to try to take him out. You know, he's not scared. What you need to do, Kamala, is go on a network like Fox News, just like your boy did, Mr. Walls did, and he got filleted. Is that a position you think Democrats should advocate for nationally? Look, the vice president and I have been clear the restoration of Roe versus Wade is what we're asking for. But that this law is a goes far beyond right Roe v. Wade. To make her own choice. The law, does, the law is very clear. It does not change that. That was been debunked on every occasion. But, but wait, look, this wait. Is a, but let's let's agree. What win. you signed is there's not a single limit through nine months of pregnancy. Roe had a trimester framework that did have limits through the pregnancy. The Minnesota law does not have that. You need to go in there to the ops and talk to the ops over there. Going like a Bill O'Reilly show, something like that. But you going on these friendly shows, you talking to the choir, you preaching to the choir, they're going to vote for you anyway. You're not changing any votes. You're not convincing anybody new. You're just talking to the choir. And the more you talk to the choir, the more less they're likely to vote for you because they, they turned off now. So if you want some new voters, go and try to convince the Republicans to come vote for you. Go to that network. But you keep talking to these folks, these women, talking about abortions and all this. They got it. We got it. You want abortions, fine. Now go over there and get some white males to come vote for you. Come get some black men to come vote for you. Because right now, they're not voting for you. But hey, shit, what the hell do I know? Huh? I'm just a driver. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, guys, hit that like button. I'll see you next time.